So Parallels have released a new version of their desktop virtualization engine for the Mac. It's now up to version 10. I wasn't massively impressed with the upgrade from version 8 to 9. It didn't seem to offer that much more for the money. For 10 though, there are some interesting things. So firstly, do, does it live up to the hype? Well, there are some things that I find particularly interesting and certainly useful, which in my head kind of make it worth the money. It does feel faster than the previous platform. I've also noticed that the memory footprint for virtual machines is lower than the previous edition, which I'll show you in a few minutes. And I've also noticed that the battery life or the impact on battery life is far less uh, than previous editions. But of course, that's probably going to be a function of the the memory and the kind of processor impact from those machines. So, so let's have a look at the general performance and uh, I'll show you some of the new stuff and you can get a, a feel for what it's about. The one thing I will say is, before we just kind of kick it off, uh, I am using QuickTime to record the screen, and that does have an impact on the performance of the machine. It's probably around a 15 to 20 percent hit, so just bear that in mind when you're looking at this. So the other thing maybe is just to have a look and see what Mac we're actually running on. So this is a late 2011 17 inch MacBook Pro, in fact it's the last of the 17 inch machines. It's running 10.9 Mavericks. It's a 2.4 gig quad core i7 with 16 gig of RAM. It's also got a 500 gig SSD in it. So it's, even though it's not a bang up to date machine, it is a very capable one. So, so let's fire up parallels. We'll have a look at some of the general performance. So the first thing you'll notice is the look and feel has changed a little bit more to that flat kind of look that you'll see in Yosemite and probably in OS 7, I guess, iOS 7. Uh, so let's fire up a machine and we'll have a look at the general performance. As you can see, it's very, very quick. So let's get logged in and we'll look at some application performance as well. So here we are with our Windows machine. Let's have a quick look and see what resources we have allocated to it. There we go. You'll see I've got four virtual processors allocated, four gig of RAM, and it's running on the SSD. So let's fire up some apps. We can have a look at the general performance. There's Excel. There's Word you can see it's very very fast um, it does feel faster than version 9 bit hard to uh, demonstrate on the video here mainly because I like I said I'm running the QuickTime screen recording which does seem to slow it down um, but it certainly does feel faster than 9 the other thing that's quite interesting is if we just switch back to the OS 10 desktop for a minute if we have a look at the memory footprint What I found is, even with that machine having 4 gig of RAM allocated to it, the memory impact on the host machine now is a significantly lower um, than the previous version. I, I, I mean, I was looking at this on version 9, and my app, the machine, even straight after power-up, was taking up about 2 gig of RAM. And as you can see there, it's only taking up a gig. So certainly on my smaller 13-inch machine, it only has a, an 8 gig of RAM in it. That's certainly uh, good to see. Um, the other thing I've noticed is the impact on the CPU seems less as well. Now that the good thing about that is that it, it, it drives battery life as well. So the impact on your, your battery seems to be far less when running this platform compared to the previous edition, which can only be a good thing. So back to our um, Windows 8 machine here. It's got the modern interface running, which uh, a lot of people don't like. You still have the option to switch to your Windows 7 view if you want. So the way you would do that is pop up to the view menu up here. Okay, you'll see you've got the option to use Windows 7 look. And what that will do is actually install the, um, I think it's Stardock. And what that should do is give you a more traditional start menu. There you go. So you can see we're actually running the um, Star Dock. It will give us the the normal start menu rather than the full screen one. So um, 
general performance is excellent so let's have a look at some of the new config options as well so what I'll do is I'll just shut this machine down so you can see uh, what the performance is there as well general performance around things like snapshotting uh, and restoring snapshotting is still excellent but let's have a look at some of the config options because there is some new stuff in there as well so we'll hit the config button okay first thing I'll notice is this piece here the configure for not sure if that's a bit of a novelty or not so mine's configured for example for productivity but it's been modified um, and what that seems to modify is the number of CPUs and how much RAM is allocated um, also, if you're running on a machine with Retina, it enables the Retina support within Parallels as well. So if I change that, for example, so if I change it from that to, I don't know, Gains, okay, and now look at the hardware options, what we'll see is that CPUs um, hasn't changed, but if you notice the RAM has been maxed up to the maximum allowed on this machine, so it's gone up to, well, 12 gigabytes of RAM there. Um, so again, if you you know change this to one of the others, like let's go for CAD. We have a look at the hardware again. It's still maxed out, and it also seems to change the video aperture as well. So for example, stuff like games or CAD, it doesn't have Retina enabled, but for productivity, it does. Um, like I say, not sure that's if that's a gimmick or not. But I'm going to stick mine back to productivity. Uh, and I'm just going to go check the CPU and everything. You will see that it's knocked it down to two CPUs and only a gig of RAM. So I'm going to change that back to what it was. Okay, so if I was running on a Retina MacBook Pro, you'd see that option there as well now. So the other thing is, um, it also kind of maintains your, your hard drive space automatically now. Um, I'm fairly sure it's supposed to on the previous editions, but I can't remember, but it never seems to work. You see that one, for example, now is showing as 4.9 gig reclaimable. So if I hit that, it'll go and reclaim back that 4.9 gig from that virtual machine. Done, it can take a little while. Um, I'm sure there are other new features in here. I, I've only started just digging around. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll come back to this um, and kind of update it later. My, my initial findings are it is faster. Um, the impact on, on RAM and battery life is worth the effort just, just you know, on, on its own. Uh, I've also found, for example, that the coherence mode is, is certainly uh, more usable than the previous edition as well. I just find it smoother and you get less of the kind of screen re flickering and redrawing. Um, so overall, I'm quite impressed with it. Is it worth £30? Depends on your usage. I mean, I probably spend most of my day in parallel. So, so for me, it is useful um, and it's worth that £30 investment. But like I say, give, give me a little while. I'll come back to it and see, see what else um, I can find in here.